I like to solve problems and I like to tell you about the problems that I've been solving and let me tell you this has solved most of my problems. So I messaged the cases. I've worked with them a couple times in the past and you know on some different M.2 enclosures and they were of such a high quality that I decided that this was what I needed in my life. Let me tell you about the problem first and then we're going to talk about this 21 in 1. It's a USB 4 but it's also a Thunderbolt 4 hub. I have a little bit of a problem here. I've got a gazillion things on my desk. I've got webcams, I've got microphones, capture devices, I've got a stream deck i've got miles keyboard i've got all kinds of things usb lights there's a lot of stuff on this desk and i like being able to use a mini pc here but it just was not working out so i put together a small pc and on the back of that there was a usb 4. not enough usb ports for everything i did but one usb port can make so many things work it's 40 gigabits per second I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro. If you get a retail key, let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, no, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. Let's say you want to get a copy of Windows 10 Pro. Also have Windows 10 Pro, and right now that key still unlocks Windows 11. You can get Windows 10 Home, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. If you're sick of paying that monthly subscription, well, you can get yourself an offline version of Office 2019 or Office 2016. The other thing is OEM keys are generally locked to your hardware. So if you move it from one motherboard to another, you may need to get another key, but you'll have to get many, many, many keys to equal the price of one retail key. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. Let's just go through this thing. So there's our big power button because you can turn this on and off. And then we have two 10 gigabits per second USB-C ports. That is 30 watt power delivery right there, but below that or beside that. And then we have a headphone and mic combo port right there. And this is SD 4.0 and TF 4.0. That's a, a micro SD. It's fast. This works with those super fast professional SD cards. And I was able to easily get 200 megabytes per second steady transfer with this. It's ridiculous. I've got a USB uh, 3 point whatever hub in the other room. And uh, that one gets like 70 to 80 megabytes per second. But this gets 200 megabytes per second. And you can use that at the same time as you're using the other stuff that's on there. It's not going to miss a beep because you got 40 gigabits per second worth of bandwidth. Anyway, moving right along, we've got some USB 2 and uh, those are type A. And we've got some USB 3 type A. Those are 10 gigabits per second, and then the USB 2 is just nice to have, in my opinion. All right, let's flip it around and take a look at the back here. Right at the top there, that's another USB-C 10 gigabit per second port. Then we have 8K 60 hertz HDMI. I don't have an 8K monitor. I'm just plugging this up. I'm using it right now, but I'm using it with a 1080p monitor. Below that, we have a separated mic and headphone. So you have the combo port on the front, and then a separate mic and a separate headphone jack on the back. That's really useful. And then below that, we have two type A ports. Those are 3.1, USB 3.1, 10 gigabits per second. Then we have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Like I said, you can use that at the same time as you're transferring stuff from your memory card and be able to get full bandwidth on both. And then we have three 40 gigabits per second ports. Those are the USB 4 or the Thunderbolt ports. And then the one there with a the little picture of a computer, that's going to go to your computer. And then below that, we have uh, the DC 20 volt input. Uh, the only thing I could really have asked for was probably a bit more when it comes to the power delivery. You've got this really, uh, you know, fancy device, but 30 watts is, uh, I mean, enough to kind of keep your laptop up and running. You can charge your laptop with it or whatever, but it'd be nice if that was all we needed to power something. But it's, it's whatever. It's, it's so much built into this thing. So how am I going to be using this? Well, I've got everything plugged up to it. It hasn't missed a beat. It's like I'm plugging it directly into the motherboard. That's the beauty with USB 4. And if you're using an Intel, you're going to be able to take advantage of Thunderbolt 4, which are very similar. I think USB 4, in my opinion, does a few things better, but it's very, very similar. And get this, this is very important to note. Uh, 2.5 gigabit ethernet is 2.5 times faster than traditional gigabit ethernet for all of you who are math challenged. Yes, I'm glad they put that there. The size is 8.74 by 7.52 by 3.9 inches and it weighs 
3.72 pounds. This it's substantial, even though it's not that big. It feels like it feels like a mini PC in your hands because it's got some weight to it. Anyway, this thing I just I, there's not much else to say about it. I mean, I can do a few tests and stuff, but I'll show you everything I've got plugged up to it. I've got it's running my monitor. I, you can do all this stuff at the same time. That's the beauty of it. And you know, of course, if you are plugging up like 10 different hard drives, well, eventually you'll run out of power. You know, like. You could plug up so many, but you have to be make sure that they all have this. That's a goofy use case, so I'm gonna skip it. Um, let's see if you're trying to run multiple USB 4 external M.2 at the same time, plugging up to the multiple ports. Well, they're all going to be fighting for bandwidth because you do only have 40 gigabits per second coming in, and even if you have multiple 40 gigabit per second ports on there. If one of them needs to go full speed, that's fine. But if they all want to go full speed at the same time, they'll have to split it and go like 15 or whatever. So that's how that works um, with the resource sharing. You can run up to two displays because, you know, you can use one of the USB-C as display port. I'm only using one display on mine, but I have everything else plugged up. I kind of can't believe how fast a lot of the stuff on this is. But for me, the main thing is it's just really just solved a major problem. And that's having extra ports for all my stuff and not having to worry about stuff cutting out because it doesn't have enough power or the USB doesn't work correctly or the hub is you know junk it works and that's extremely important for me because I'm running a business here and I don't have time for things that don't work and I wanted to make a video to show you this thing because I like it <laughs> it's cool anyway there's not much else to say about it it's loaded and if you need a hub then this is quality and I haven't seen much else I, even in this you know price range that I think has this many features and can do this much. So let me know what you think of this in the comments. This is the Acasis 21 port, 40 gigabits per second Thunderbolt 4 docking station. Also works with USB 4 just fine because I'm not using Thunderbolt. Let me know what you think in the comments. Head over to epicpants.com, grab some new stuff, grab some new stuff, get the sale while it's there, and I'll see you in the comments.